So the, the, the infections you do see, um, I suspect pneumonia is number one, or do you see opportunist infections, those kinds of things? You see a few, but they're not, they're, you know, they don't stand out, you know, they don't stand out as being increased. Really, with both you know, GS1101 and with, uh, you know, and with ibrutinib, the most common infection you see is pneumonia. And that's the most common infection you see in, right. in CL, all that, and sinus infections. And, you know, that's, that's still, that's still a challenge, you know, and, and, you know, it, it points to, what we've, you know, what we've talked about, you know, what we've talked about, and we see patients that, you know, you really need to be on top of this, you know, and, and sometimes because CLL, because CLL, it, you know, particularly if you're being treated in the community, a community doctor may just have, you know, three or four CLL patients. If you're getting into the setting where you're having three, four repeated infections, you know, you're going several months without, you know, without relief from, uh, you know, an infection after multiple antibiotics, being sure your immunoglobulins have been checked, and you know, in that setting, you know, you know, a gamma globulin replacement can really help. You know, and you know, there's say, you know, there's certain there are certain things that we can do to you know to help with you know to help with infections. And, you know, and that's one of them. Right, I, and I think intravenous immunoglobulin, you know, for people with current severe infections. Now there were a couple issues uh, uh, with each drug that's kind of mm -hmm. specific. Um, Bleeding issues uh, were noticed at first. Uh, so tell us the story and what we know now on that with ibrutinib. Yeah. Well, I think I think you know there there have been you know there have been a few bleeding you know a few bleeding events with you know with ibrutinib you know what's and 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 you know the my understanding and I, as I said I would talk with talk, talk with the company. But you know what's been presented to in, to investigators is that these these have been looked at by an, a, you know, an independent expert panel, and you know the frequency is not higher than what you would expect. And you know it's really it's it, it's going to be the randomized phase three studies that tell us if there's a you know if there's a difference you know where you're looking at a standard therapy versus you know you know the the ibrutinib. You know, that being you know that being you know that being, you know, that being said. Given that there, you know, given that there were a few events, these occurred, you know, and, and they were they, these occurred in you know, generally in people on warfarin. You know, the company's taking the approach that they're, you know, warfarin patients that are on warfarin or Coumadin, you know, are not going to be able to go on ibrutinib studies. You know, and I think, you know, say whether that will loosen up, you know, whether that will loosen up later, you know, it's going to really depend upon the data. You do see bruising with ibrutinib. And you know, say it's generally not of clinical consequence. That probably occurs. You know, there have only been a, a very small number of, of major bleeding events with ibrutinib. Uh, you know, the bruising probably is a little bit more common. You know, it's in the it's in the 10 percent or 10 percent or less range. Uh, but you know, and 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 again, it's something that comes and goes. Um, and in, in generally, it's not it's not it hasn't been of clinical consequence. And there was that reassuring platelet study, which suggested that platelet aggregation, the counts actually improve. Yeah. I think you've got data on that. Yeah. And the platelet aggregation study was reassuring. Yeah, uh, you know, and so so I think it's like any new, it's like any new, it's like any new drug. You 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 want to be real careful, and you know, say, you know, say I, you know, you know, I pers, you know, I I personally have ex have experience for the physician. You don't want you don't want to do something that's going to harm, you know, that's going to harm a patient. So you have to be very, very careful. But we really won't know until a lot of patients are treated. It's, you know, say, and, you know, and, and the, tri the randomized trials will, you know, will tell us. But that was reassuring, you know, and again, I think as more and more people get treated with ibrutinib, you know, and, and there's, you know, say, there's not a suggestion that it's coming out much above background, you know, is assuring. You know, and I, and I think as well, we're, you know, we're dealing with a drug, we're dealing with a class of drugs that are helping patients so much, you know, and, and you know, so if if we were treating if we were treating you know, allergic rhinitis and we had this small risk, we wouldn't we, we would we would probably not take the you know even if there was a small chance we wouldn't take the chance. We're treating CLL, which you know for many you know for many patients can be you know say particularly when people are getting to this drug now they don't have a lot of options. And you know, and and this is this is really, you know, a life-saving therapy. So, I, I I think the concern about the concern about this, you know, is really being addressed carefully. And and um, you know, I I don't have a lot of I I don't have a lot of concerns, 
about this, uh, you know, about this complication, provided patients are watched closely, and, and we'll just have to see how the long-term follow-up shows up. Now, GS1101 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. has had a couple issues, um, elevated liver enzymes, mm -hmm. transaminitis, mm -hmm. and then this sort of atypical pneumonia, do you know? Can you comment on those? And what yeah, you're well, there's, so there's less, so, you know, the, the, the transaminitis or the elevated LFTs, you know, occurs in, in 10 to 15 percent of patients. It, you know, fortunately occurs relatively soon. So if it's going to happen, it ha you know, it happens usually within the first 12 to 16 weeks. It doesn't occur late. And generally, you can stop the medicine if, it's, if, it's, if the LFTs, the liver functions go high enough, and then it gets better, and then you can restart, and it doesn't recur. You know, and so, so and, and really the mechanism, what's causing it, we don't, you know, we don't know. As you say, the, the, um, oh, I'm sorry, this, this is beeping. So, so you'll, you'll edit that out. Uh, we'll, we'll edit that out, yeah. So, so uh, let me, so, so, so the uh, liver function tests um, generally um, are not an issue, or? The liver function tests are not, you know, are not an issue. Um, the, you know, the atypical, you know, the atypical pneumonia, again, there's not been there's not been enough uh, there's not been enough data there's not enough data to say if this is going to be a safety signal, um, although you know there have been you know there have been a few interstitial uh, pneumonias, and you know I'm not as pervy I'm not as pervy to that data we've been we've been much more involved you know, so, you know our group has been much more involved with you know ibrutinib I mean we've treated 180 patients with ibrutinib at wow. OSU. The, How many people in the world have taken ibrutinib? I, I, you know, so it's 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 now probably getting close to to you know, if I, it's, you know to six, seven hundred or more. Wow. But but um, with 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 GS eleven oh one. Just, just by how the studies have, you know, how the studies have rolled out, we have less experience with it. So I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with, with sort of answering the question about LFTs, but the question with, with pneumonia, we just, I just don't have, I'm not close enough to data, the data to know. All right. So, how do you, you know, it seems to me, you know, nothing is for free. There's some mild right. safety issues, but the efficacy is amazing, as you talked about, and the adverse events are much lower than general chemo. So. Where uh, these are entering uh, phase three trials, so talk to you know what should the the local community hematologist, the um, the patient with CLL who's interested in this, uh, you know wh wh where's where's this at? What can they do if they want access to this stuff? Yeah, so uh, well, there are several phase three studies that are you know that are open uh, right now, or that are going to be opening with these different drugs, and and there are a couple of real, I think, attractive trials. You know one. So, you know the uh, you know the the Resonate trial, which is you know a randomized comparison you know, to ibrutinib versus ofatumumab in relapse CLL, uh, and you know the eligibility for that are fairly wide open, and really for most of my patients I think that's that I'm seeing unless they have really 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 rapidly proliferating disease, that's a great therapy because you're going to get you're going to get a biologic therapy. That's not going to suppress your, you know, that's not going to suppress your marrow, and you've got a 50 percent chance of getting, you know, of getting ibrutinib, and the study is designed, you know, the study is designed that when the results are, you know, when the results have been you know, analyzed after the, you know, say, in at the interim analysis, if it's positive, the company is going to, you know, the company is going to allow the patients in the ofatumumab arm to get early access to ibrutinib. Those who need it. Yeah, those who need it. Those yeah. those who are doing well. And and you know so both therapies are you know both therapies in my mind are better than a bendamustine rituximab or an FCR treatment in that setting because because the, you know the, you know ofatumumab you know it, it's a good CD20 antibody it has it, you know it has act, it, you know activity and not a lot of toxicity compared to chemotherapy um, you know so the the other the other studies you know that are ongoing with the, they're, you know they're ongoing with these molecules there is you know so there is a, a GS1101 um, you know, retu uh, say versus you know versus you know versus rituximab, um, you know th that's for patients who are not candidates for chemotherapy, and it has a you know it has a you know it has a cross you know it has a crossover, um, and, and you know say you know the rituximab that's used in the study is is not how anybody would give rituximab, um, but you know it's 
it's, you know, again, another study, if one wants to stay away from chemotherapy, you know, it's, you know, it's a reasonable, you know, it's a reasonable option, you know, and, you know, so say, there, there are going to be trials, you know, say, you know, that are about to open with both of these agents, you know, combining it with bendamustine rituximab versus, uh, you know, versus bendamustine rituximab alone, uh, you know, and again, some, you know, some people are more comfortable with the, the, you know, the tried and true of, chemo, you know, of chemotherapy, and these are good trials, and you know, really, what's going to get us, and then lastly, there's a 17P, you know, study with ibrutinib, you know, that's going to be, you know, that's, it's, it's single arm, you know, so everybody that goes, everybody that enrolls on the study will get ibrutinib, um, and it's for relapse, relapse 17 PCLL, and, you know, that, you know, that you know, is on clinicaltrials.gov. It's not open at any of the sites, but it's going to, you know, it's going to open soon, and I think the message I could give to patients and, you know, hopefully that you'll get out, you know, is, you know, we're going to get this approved for everybody the sooner we get these studies done. You know, if that 17P study, for instance, enrolls quickly, uh, say, you know, that will shape, you know, th that will probably, uh, you know, greatly accelerate how quickly the drug, you know, the drug could be provisionally approved for all patients. And so, um, you know, if I, if, if I say, you know, say, you know, if, if, you know, say, if I had 17P CLL in, with relapse disease and, and I needed to be treated, you know, you know, I'd go to my doctor. I'd go, you know, I'd go to my doctor and say, I'd, I'm interested. I'm interested in hearing about this, and have him look, or I'd look myself at where, you know, what the sites are going to be, or I'd call pharmacyclics and 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 communicate with them and find out what the sites are going to be, and and you know, go to one of those go to one of those sites, you know, and and you know, because the patients that participate in that study, you know, are going to be really contributing, you know, to the future, you know, to the future. Of all CLL patients, and I think we'll have a, a, a very reasonable chance of, of getting some benefit from you know from that treatment as well. All right, let's take another quick break. Yeah.